Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you, the YouTube audience, the training that you need to tackle jobs like this on your own. Today's job is going to be doing a retaining wall stucco repair and let's get into it right now. Okay, you see what's happening here? The, the wall is just crumbling and falling apart. This is, let's just say, three and a half feet uh, and it's a retaining wall and it's basically a block wall that has been stucco coated you can see the the original block right through the stucco okay we are going to be repairing this with this product right here uh, rapid set stucco patch patch and paint in two hours so this is um, a pretty good project this this is a DIY pr uh, project absolutely you can do this project no problem we're going to be doing using nothing but simple hand tools. Uh, we've got a um, uh, triangle uh, mason trowel um, right there. There's a sponge float right there. There is what else? Oh, that's just a crowbar and a uh, hammer. And I got a margin trowel up there somewhere. Oh, there it is. There's a margin trowel kind of hidden away. Okay, um, so. And I was intimidated from doing this job for the longest time, but I've just recently got done with another stucco job, and I used the uh, rapid set uh, uh, stucco patch for the whole job. Let me show you that real fast so you can see what I'm talking about. This whole section of stucco was falling apart and just completely crumbling due to um, hydrostatic pressure and hydraulic water pressure. And the reason why was because the previous stucco people had taken this weep screed and they had completely stuccoed over it and it caused the water because it goes down to the ground to just capillary action up until it got to that wood the, the trim wood there and then it just pushed out um, the paint and the stucco so you can check out my channel and you can see this complete repair where I took this stucco down to the, uh, uh, completely demoed it out, took out the wood, went down to the studs, and rebuilt it from the studs out. So, and I also added this electrical outlet. So now I have a nice electrical outlet here on the outside. So if you want to see that complete video, uh, go ahead and uh, check out my channel. Uh, subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. I also uh, went through this. Uh, uh, walkway cover here and they were all going crazy. I completely uh, demoed um, and removed all this. I used to have two rows of tiles here and I added that to uh, three rows. So if you want to also see how to do that project you can check out my channel Ken Training. Let's get back to today's project. Okay so I've just got my materials here on the ground and uh, just sitting over there. Now the, the first thing I want to do is I want to come over to my wall here and I want to get rid of all the material that's not sound. Now I'm going to tap on this and I want you to see if you can pick this up in the camera. Okay, listen to this sound. Now listen to it when I when I hit here on the wall. Now by the way this has a, a, a metal uh, a metal on the, on the bottom of it. It's not, it's not plastic like this. It's, it's got a metal uh, button on the bottom. Hear that? Now listen to this again. You see how this sounds different? I know that this material is not anchored properly because just, just because of the way it's got like that hollow sound. It sounds completely different than that. So I, 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 don't want, I don't want that. So all my material that's going to be demoed, I'll just push down there. The, um, so let me show you what I want to do here. All right, the first thing that I want to do is I just want to take the uh, bark mulch and just get that away from my project area because I don't want to have to deal with bark mulch. So I'll take this, this wall in like sections. I won't do the whole thing all at once, but I'll, I'll work in a big enough section that I can get enough done. So I just want to clear away this so I can just have the, the, the wall exposed to what I want to, to, to do. Then, I'm just going to kind of get rid of the material that is uh, soft. Like this whole top section here, 
this whole top section is just it's not it's not anchored. So I don't I don't want that. See how that's just coming right up? This whole thing is just garbage. It looks like it's even so I want to I want to dig out enough material to where I get to really solid this even this material here. Then whoever patched this in the past just didn't do a very good job. So this whole thing is just all crumbly. So I'm gonna demo this out to the point where I've got some some sound uh, a sound wall. So this way I when I put my stucco patch on, which actually. Now it's going down deeper than I anticipated. We'll actually probably be in two processes. I'll end up doing cement first or something like that. Uh, and then putting the stucco on top. Is, uh, I don't want to uh, just use this material to go and, and build it out with um, uh, going so deep. So I don't know how deep I'm going to get into it. But I'm just going to I'm just going to use this process and tear apart. Well, we'll just say, you know, from from here over to here just to try to figure out how much I got. You can see how much of the uh, top of this thing is just completely falling apart. Now, and then you can see on the top here how it's just completely falling apart as well. But, when I came over to this section, you notice how I left that section right there and I want to explain why I did that. When I use the tapping method, I'll show you right now. If you take this and use the tapping method, and then you compare it to this, notice how they sound the same? That's telling me that this is actually anchored properly, unlike all this product, which was just crumbling and falling apart. So, so this is kind of like the technique that I'm going to be doing all the way down. If there's a little section like this, I'll just go ahead and pop that out just because it's so small. Um, uh, and then I'm just going to uh, continue continue down. Well, let me show you the uh, side wall here. Now, when it comes to the side wall, I can see lifting going on right here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And it's just falling apart. It's like, it's not, it's like not a good bond. So I just want to get rid of this until we get something solid. And I can use this. It's still a little bit soft here. Uh, one more tool I think I'll get is also a wire brush. But that might be alright. Sounds a little weak, you know. If it if it's gonna come out, I want it to come out now. There we go. So I'll just pop this off. It, it, it didn't do a good, a really good adhesion job here. It was a very, very poor stucco job. So I just want to do that until I get down to some solid, some solid material. So, solid enough that it's not going to come out, at least easily with this tool. With, that's a margin trial. So that's how I'm going to handle the top. That's how I'm going to handle the side. And I'm just going to completely go through this, um, I don't know, for about 10 feet or so, just to get this whole section 100% to solid substrate. Another tool that's really good is just using a nice stiff wire brush with a metal scraping end. Okay, so I have pretty much taken a crowbar, putty knife, and a broom, and I've ripped out all of the old 
loose stucco that was attached to the wall. I have a pile of the rubble that I removed from over to here. Basically the top is where most of the um, the um, uh, destruction uh, or the looseness of the concrete uh, stucco material has really taken place. So all the stuff that's on here now is is reasonably good. I do need to do uh, go through the whole wall but just for this uh, demonstration I'm just going to uh, stop right about here and just do this one section here because this is a pretty good representation of what the rest of the wall is. Um, so, um, so right now demo out the, uh, the very loose material. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my blower and I'm just going to uh, blow out the uh, channel channels and everything just to get rid of any loose stuff. Then I want to um, uh, spray things down and, uh, and, and get everything nice and clean to, to get ready to uh, put on some, um, some, uh, some new, uh, well in this case they're going to do two, two, two processes, the mortar and then the stucco. So uh, let's go ahead and start blowing out. Alright, that did a really good job. Really got these uh, cracks and crevices, uh, all that loose stuff blown out. This is actually a pretty good substrate to go ahead and attach to right now. Just wet it down just a little bit and then go ahead and put the, uh, the mortar on uh, in order to uh, and, have, and have something good to really attach to. I think we're going to be good with this. This, is, this feels really good. You know what? So still, it's a little chalky. I mean, it'll give it a little bit more of a blowdown. This 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 particular substrate is like real porous. I got to admit, this is a very porous product that the previous people used. So even though I ripped out a lot, listen to this. Right here, you can you can it sounds like hollow here compared to over here. And when I try to just rip it out with my hands like this and try to wiggle it back and forth, I can't rip it out. So even though it still has a little bit of a hollow sound to it, so I guess this wall, depending upon how crazy you want to go with it, you know, there's a there's tons of hollow spots. But you know, I just got to I just ripped out the real loose stuff. So even though I blew it out, I still want to get all this loose stuff out. The better you attach here, the better your job is going to be. You see how much um, material I'm still breaking free here. So I'm going to go ahead and scrub this all down and then blow it out again just to get this all, um, anything that's loose, get this uh, taken up uh, 100%. I have a bag of uh, Quickcrete mortar mix that I used. This is just leftover product from another job. Um, but you can see that the pers that the uh, just add water and that it's good for uh, barbecues, walls, pillars, tuck point mortar joints and uh, they're doing brick and block uh, wall and stuff like that. Which is what we're dealing with is a block wall. And um, so this is like I said just leftover material I want to make sure that, though that it's going to work well. I did a patch on this with another job. Let me show it to you. When I uh, was did this job here, when I put down these paver stones, I had a break in the concrete over here, and I used that mortar mix to uh, make the uh, the repair. Let me show it to you because it is uh, right here. There it is, right there, and it's kind of similar to the job that we're doing right now. That's that there is at least two inches thick. Let's just see how it sounds. feels nice and solid. It just, I think we're going to be fine using this mortar mix for our project. When we do this job here, I did not want to get material that had aggregate in it. So I want to make sure that what I use does not have the aggregate, just basically uh, the sand and the uh, concrete mix um, and the cement. So the sand and cement basically uh, without the aggregate. So that's 
what uh, so I just want to make sure I'm getting the right I'm using the right product for this this here all I want to do is just get this level so that we we can put the uh, stucco material just like this here get it level here and then we'll put the stucco material on top so there's going to be two two processes but as long as I've got this uh, leftover uh, bag of uh, mortar mix I just want to use that up all right I want to show you how I'm going to mix up this uh, this mortar okay so I've got two empty one quart containers here one's going to be for the water which will be wet and one's going to be dry for the mortar mix um, they, did, they give you a, a ratio on the packaging but it's to mix a whole bag and I'm not going to plan on mixing a whole bag at once so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with one container of water and three containers of um, mortar mix and see what that looks like for my mixer I got my half inch drill here with an egg beater um, uh, attachment to do the actual mixing and then I just got that plugged into a, a 12 gauge extension cord here to my outside uh, GFCI protected outlet so fully protected from working with water on the outside um, and and I got a margin trowel I got a sponge and I have a garden hose here ready to to go now I do want to take my um, garden hose and I do want to spray this down just a little bit like this because I don't want that brand new um, uh, batch of mortar mix that I'm gonna uh, make up I don't want this dry concrete to suck all the moisture out of it immediately thereby weakening the uh, the strength of the mortar mix so I'm just gonna wet it down and, it, and this also it helps with the adhesion or the bondability the bonding of the um, the uh, mortar mix that I'm going to make up to the substrate which which is this uh, block wall so a um, couple of things that I'm just doing here just to kind of give you a, a little bit of an overview all right I'm going to get my mask on we're going to mix up a batch right now That might be too dry. Let me take a look at that. Oh no. That's fine. That's not too dry. If anything, that's still too wet. It's a little on the wet side. It's not terrible. It holds on for a second. I can have this be a little bit sloppy. This is not the end of the world. I think I can work with that. Okay, we're good to go with that that mixture that we got right there. So I'm fine with that. Now let's get over to our project over here. And let's start uh, getting this uh, laid out and done. So let's go ahead and start laying this out. I got some cardboard here just to make sure I don't get anything uh, over in, over from the from the um, bark mulch contaminating our project. This can be a little bit rough because this is still not, I, w I don't want this to be totally smooth. I want this to have a rough texture because I want the stucco to attach to this area. So I'm just going to keep this with a, with a rough texture, so to speak.
All right, so here's our job that we just did. Our bucket is completely empty, so we went through that uh, that entire small batch that I just made up. I'm leaving the texture on the top rough because I, I, when I boot do the stucco, I want the stucco to adhere to something. And so I don't want a smooth finish like, like this. So what I want to do is I want to take my margin trowel and I just want to kind of... Uh, See, I made that a little bit too creamy on top. You know, I don't want that cream. I want uh, slightly, anything slightly dry and slightly rough. Like that. And I don't want a creamy texture right now. Because uh, this is not a final, uh, final product. This is just the underlayment. So I just want to make sure that I'm, um, you know, I'm kind of like rough like that. This here is perfect over here, this type of texture. I want it to cure, cure out just like that. But um, I still have some more to go. I'm just going to make up another batch and continue on with this uh, project. But I think you get the idea of what it is that I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm just trying to fill that in so when I do the stucco over overlayment over this, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not filling in with all that stucco. This stucco patch is $15 for 25 pounds of material, okay? So when you go and get that uh, mortar mix that I have, when you buy mortar mix like this, it's like 60 pounds for $6. I won't even buy this one next. The next one that I buy is going to be uh, spec mix, um, a mortar mix, spec mix, type S, gray. It's a 94 pound bag and it's $7. That's going to be the next bag that I buy. It's just, I'm just trying to use this up because I had it left over and I don't want, it get, if it gets too old, it dries out and it's no good. So, but I still have plenty of work here to do. So this is not a problem, I'm, but I'm going to mix up another batch right now. Okay, this batch is uh, empty. Let me go see. I got just a little bit left. Let me go try to finish it off. Okay, I just had a very small amount left in that uh, batch. So this is how much I could get done. So that bag there is completely empty. And I've already went through and uh, cleaned out my tools. I always clean out my buckets when I'm working with cement. My tools, everything's got to be cleaned out right away to make sure that everything, that no cement sticks to it. So the only thing for me to do now is go and go get some more cement, some more uh, mortar mix. So um, that's it for now. I just got back from the Home Depot and I got $34 worth of material. Here's $7 for this bag of spec mix pre-blended dry mortar type S, which stands for structural. This bag is 94 pounds. It's no joke to try to move this thing. I also got this bag of rapid set stucco mix. That's 50 pounds of stucco mix for $15. This over here is $15, but it's only 25 pounds. So uh, this product here, I'm used to using. Uh, this product over here, I, uh, first time I've ever used it. So I'm excited to try that out. This is a uh, half the price. You get you get twice as much product for the same amount of money. Um, I'm figuring that this is somehow superior. So I'm not sure what the differences are yet. Um, I'll try to figure that out. And I uh, also purchased some some muriatic acid. So muriatic acid. This is uh, what you use. This is swimming pool muriatic acid. I got a little bit left over here from. Uh, previous job. Let's see how much is in there. Uh, not much. So anyways, I got you get two gallons for ten dollars. Weirdly enough, you can get one gallon for ten dollars or two for ten dollars. So it's like, why not get two? So whatever. Um, okay, so those are all the products. We'll get going. So here's our project. It's been about nine hours since we left it. Uh, we started this morning, then we went to our day job, and now we're back this evening. We're going to continue on with this. This is all set up super hard, so 
all that stuff that we did this morning is hard. I wetted it down a little bit with the hose as I did these uh, sections that we're going to work in right here. And I've got my station over here where we've got our brand new bag of spec mix. This is what it looks like. Nice and powdery. It's not like that clumpy stuff I was dealing with because that other bag was old. That other bag was six months old, maybe a year old. I don't know. So now I'm trying to figure out what the correct ratio is of water to spec mix. Right now I got one container of water and I got three containers of the um, the uh, spec mix uh, mortar and it's really uh, soupy uh, right now so let's uh, see I'm just trying to figure out what the correct ratio is go with three and a half there we go three and a half let's see what that does Real soupy. Let's go with the rest of that. All right, let me try that. That's a four to one ratio. Let me try that. Okay, this is how I test it. I take my my margin trowel. I go down like this and then I turn it to the side. You see that? Boy, that is good. It's uh it's pretty creamy. And look at that adhesion. I mean you slap it down once and you turn it to the side. I am pretty happy with that. I have no problems with this. Four to one ratio. Let's get to work. I just want to point out the way that I'm trying to not completely fill that in. I'm trying to leave that edge so this way when I put the stucco material in there it has something to key into and grab onto. Plus, I don't want to fill this crack in with the mortar. I want to fill that in with the stucco compound so I'm going to leave that be and I'm just basically going to continue on. Alright, so you basically have the technique down that I'm trying to uh, accomplish and I'm just going to continue filling this in and can, moving down the wall. Okay, so this is how much progress we've made. Pretty much we have the top of this completely ready for the uh, stucco material. My, I'm doing this wall in a couple different segments. Right about here is a good uh, breaking point. I'm sorry, right about here is a good breaking point, so I'm trying to do that in one segment and this in one segment. Um, so the top of this is all good, the sides of this is all good, except right here. See that crack? I want, I don't like that, and I want to put stucco over that, but the first thing I need to do is I need to build that crack and make it larger so that the stucco has something to key into, like this area right here. So I got some tools down here. Um, and we're just going to try and use uh, these basic hand tools and let's just see if I can't accomplish that goal. If I can't, the, uh, the ideal tool would be a 4 inch mason, uh, angle grinder with a masonry bit, which I don't have. Um, I've got the grinder, but I don't have the uh, correct uh, blade for it, a masonry blade. But uh, I do have a 7 and a quarter inch saw that I could use if I need to get to that stage with the masonry blade, but let's try this first. Okay, something like that should be deep enough. I'm trying to give you the close-up zoom so you can see just about how deep this uh, whole section is. And that should be deep enough in order for me to key into. 
with the uh, with the stucco material. So I'm uh, going to clear my tools out out of here. I'm just going to wash this down to make sure that there's no debris inside of there. All right, if, if you just saw that, just with the garden hose, I was taking off some of this uh, stucco material. I'm going to have to get a pressure washer out here because um, this is just too loose for me. I got I want to knock, knock off as much of this before I move on to the next step. So I'm going to grab a pressure washer and bring it out here. And I'm going to pressure wash this section to get it uh, good and uh, cleaned out. Okay, we are back to our project. Today we have a gas pressure washer and I am going to start washing down this entire wall. I already started a little bit uh, right here, knocking off that flake right there and just right there real briefly. But here's a look at the wall uh, before. So I'm not going to be able to video the whole thing. So here's a, a look at the before on how much the wall looks like before I really get into it. And I'm just starting the job right now. I'll give you a little bit of footage with me doing it, but not that much footage. The pressure washing is complete. I probably should have started with the pressure washing. So anyways, what I did was, is I, is I hit the entire wall pressure washing, then I went through with the scraper and then scraped everything out. So um, this is what the, uh, this is what it looks like after the pressure washing. So if this is what you can see like a little bit of a comparison of uh, what it was like. Let me show you the rest of the wall. All right, so here's that section with the stair step crack right there. This is all cleaned out real nice. All right, and you can kind of see the ground here, uh, how much debris came off. Where I did over there, my original scraping wasn't that bad. I didn't do a lot of scraping here, and I just put this started with the pressure washing. You can see how much debris just kind of came off with, with this technique uh, right there. And I went, uh, I didn't do the entire wall, which goes all the way over to that corner. What I did was, is I stopped, there's a bush over there, and I stopped over there. But uh, this is kind of like uh, what it looks like here, so, so that you can get a feel for that. You definitely want to be wearing rubber boots and eye protection when you do this job. Because uh, the water, once you, uh, when you're spraying with the water and you hit pockets like that there, just flies everywhere. Okay, it's the next day. We're back to our project here. We have pressure washed the uh, the entire wall, so everything's been pressure washed. I didn't even clean up the uh, the ground really. The debris is still sitting there. But what we are going to do now is we are going to try to etch. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create the best bondability from the new stucco material to the masonry existing wall. So in an effort to create the best bond here, we're going to etch this like concrete here. And the product we're going to use is swimming pool muriatic acid. And, uh, and of course it's an acid, so you gotta be very careful. Here's some leftover stuff that I had from another um, project, but it's basically, it's just the same stuff. Swimming pool muriatic acid. We're, I'm gonna put on a pair of safety glasses. I've got a couple of uh, brushes here to aid in the washing. And I've got some, uh, some gloves over here. And I've got a bucket of water. So we're gonna start off by uh, taking this uh, water and adding some acid to it. And, and the, the ratio that I'm gonna use is about 
uh, one part of the acid to ten parts of water. So that's about the ratio that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and add that now and get this project going. We have acid etched, acid washed the entire wall. I only gave you video footage like from here to here, but I actually did the entire wall, okay? Uh, so I, I did that, that last section off camera. Now, the entire wall has been acid washed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I've got a, I've dumped the acid, I've just got a bucket of water here so I can wash my brushes, and I've got a garden hose. Now I'm going to take the garden hose and I'm going to wash everything down to get the pH of the concrete back to neutral and get that that very low acidic pH off the p off the wall. So there's a few things that are happening here. You know, I did the I did the pressure washing, which is using the high pressure washer to clean it. Then I actually went through with the scraper to try to scrape everything off. Then I went through with the brush and gave it uh, a brush agitation with an acid, so giving an, an acid etch on top of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a wash down. You see how much prep I'm doing before the stucco goes on the wall to give it the best bondability. See how this guy before me, how half of his stuff fell off? I mean, a good chunk of his material stayed on, but, you know, he had large sections here that fell off that just delaminated because his bond wasn't solid. I'm hoping not to have that same occurrence. That's why I'm doing all of this prep work so that, so that way I've got the best bond. Now, I have a, uh, an empty container of the muriatic acid. And let me tell you, these containers are very, very strong. It's not like a regular milk container. The thickness of this material is really thick. I save razor blades from projects. So these are just bad razor blades. This makes an excellent sharps container to put all of your sharps into. So I went and I, um, I washed out the acid, dumped it out, and it's just water on the inside. I'm going to, once the outside of this dries, I'll, I'll label it sharps. I'll just keep that on my shelf and all my blades can go in there because you're not so, legally you're not supposed to throw away sharp, can, sharp blades just into the regular trash so people don't accidentally hurt themselves. Maybe a homeless person digging through your trash trying to find something. So this is uh, a way for them to stay safer and for you to get rid of your sharps legally. So, excellent idea since I'm into this project. Why not? It's right there, it's free. I've already used up the acid, and bingo. Use up every resource you've got. Okay, the entire wall is completely rinsed off with the garden hose. We're getting ready to start our project now and actually get some stucco on the wall. We're going to use the Rapid Set Stucco patch material. I've got two one-quart containers. One will be uh, dr uh, the wet one and one will be the dry one. <clears throat> so that's what those are for. Uh, this is the, I have this stucco patch. I got more inside. Now, I've got three buckets here. That one there is just full of water. That's going to be for my uh, sponge float when I get to the to the to the last stage, the floating stage, to get my finish on there. I've got a margin trowel, I got a regular trowel, and I got a hawk. Uh, I just have some cardboard down here to kind of help me. Uh, there's a low spot over there, and in case I drop anything, it drops onto the cardboard. Uh, I have two buckets here. So one bucket, this one is full of water. This one is empty. This is the mix bucket here. And I've already, I'm familiar with this product, so I, uh, you can check out my channel on stucco repair and you can see a full video on, on me doing a whole wall. Uh, not a masonry wall like this, actually it was a stud, it was a stud home exterior wall where I, where I built it out. Now, on this project here, I'm going to be doing uh, three 
uh, the, the ratio is 1 to 4, but I find that the best ratio is 1 part water to 3 and a half parts of rapid set stucco patch. So, uh, and they weigh the way they want you to mix it is you put the water in first and then you add the stucco patch and you mix it. Let me show you my mixer. So I got a half inch drill with an egg beater mixer right here. So this is going to be how we mix the product up. Once I get into this, I got to stay on it till that batch is 100% done because in 20 minutes this thing sets up and the sun is already starting to go. So uh, it's starting to get warm. I may not even have 20 minutes of working time. So once I get into it, I got to do it and get the entire batch on the wall and done. So um, I have to move rapidly and I'm by myself too. And I'm trying to film this project at the same time. First thing I need, so I'm all set up. I've got all my materials here. I got my garden hose, my buckets. I have everything ready to go. I'm just going to set the camera back. I'm going to start mixing my batch up and then I'm going to uh, get it on the wall. So you, I'm going to try to show you everything during those, during the, in each step of the game. Okay, so I have to decide which one's wet, which one's dry. That would be the wet one, this will be the dry one. Now the first thing I do is just dip this in my bucket of water and just get one full container of that. Then I can set that aside. Then take my dry, my dry one here and get, start off with one of them. Actually, we'll start off with two. Go one, do one more because one's very, very light. There's two. Now, set that aside and let's go ahead and mix this up and get this going. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, now we're going to add one more container. That'll be three. That's three. Let's mix that up. All right, now let me show you what, th what three looks like, and I'll show you how I tell the, tell the thickness. Okay, so what you do is you take your margin trowel, scoop it in, and you go, and you slap it down, and you turn it to the side. Now that's very, very thick. Look how thick that is. Now, actually, that might even be it. It's a little... It's a little runny, but let me do that one more time. Boy, without even throwing my, th my margin trowel down, I mean, that is just... That was, that's just a 3 to 1 ratio. This is how thick it looks. It looks a little thin. I think I, think I could add just a little bit. I'm just going to add a small amount. Maybe not a half scoop, but maybe a quarter of a scoop. Let's just go with uh, just under a half. Let's put that in. Let's mix that up and then call it a day. Let's try that. Immediately rinse off your your, uh, your egg beater. I always like to get it off of the uh, prongs here as much as possible. Let's make sure that I'm dealing with something clean. Okay, let's check our, our mixture here. This stuff is so sticky, it's, 
that's that's a really good aspect. You know? It's really nice that it's sticky. You just got to make sure it's just the right consistency. All right, let's go for it. Let's go for that right now. All right, I think what I'll do is I'll start in this section over here and try to come out that way. And so what I'll do is I'll take my hawk, put it on here with my margin trowel, and don't completely fill it up, but let's just start off with this much. Let's see how, how well this does. Then take my regular steel trowel, bring this over here. Uh, I think I can, I think this is okay. I think I'm going to be able to work with this. It's, uh, the, the, um, the wetness is a little dry. Let me, um, let me make that a little bit looser, a little bit moister. There. Let me try that. As you can see on that first coat, I did not get full coverage. I did pretty good, but I'm definitely weak in this section over here at the top, and I'm going to need to redo that. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I got some um, stucco material on the wall, and I can let that uh, cure out. I can continue on at the wall, and I can come back to that section after it's uh, cured out in 20 minutes. So. Um, but basically, that's kind of like the procedure that I'm going to do. I'm going to just continue on with that, get some stucco on there, and if it's at the finish level, float it out with the 
with the with the uh, with the sponge that was the uh, the red sponge that you saw that is how you kind of float it out to bring out that aggregate to give it that kind of a uh, this is a, what's called a 1620 finish which is the amount of um, uh, grit or granulars of the of the um, uh, of the material of the stucco material that kind of shows through um, and that's the finish that I'm kind of going for which which resembles the existing wall so uh, I'm gonna have to mix up another batch to uh, continue on for this next batch I'm gonna try to use stucco mix this stuff here is fifteen dollars for the bag fifty fifty pounds of material this was fifteen dollars for the box but there's only 25 pounds of material in that so this is literally half price uh, I've never worked with this one before so I'm gonna give it a go right now since since that bag there that, that I use that one is almost empty I don't have enough to make a full batch so I'm gonna go ahead and do it with this and give it a go and see what happens All right, hopefully you can see that but with three it's just a soupy mess so let's go ahead and add one more give it another give it four in total Let me see what the trowel looks like on that. Okay. Oh, it's just a soupy mess. Let's add another one. All right, let's see what the trowel looks like on that. Four and a half slides right off. Add the rest of that. That's five. All right, let's see what that does. Too soupy. Got to add another half. I need it to stick to the trowel. That's five and a half. See if that's like this is getting real hard to mix up with my half inch grinder. I'll tell you that much. I mean my half inch uh, drill. All right. See if we have some bite. Not exactly. The stickiness of this product is nowhere near the same as the other one. Look at that. Look at how different this product is. You get what you pay for. Let's see if it'll stick to the wall. All right. Let's go for it. This is not working for me. Holy cow. I'm not going to be able to use this. This stuff's just coming right off the wall. Product is not gonna. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna be able to work with this. 
it's just too it's too crumbly it's not sticky it's not sticking together I can't oh, I can't get it to do what I want it to do Let's see here It just crumbles right off the wall. Maybe I made it too stiff. It's got to be looser. I made it too stiff. I got to loosen it up a little bit. All right, I'm going to try to loosen this up with some water to try to see if I can get it to stick to the wall. I'm not getting it to stick as is. So let me try that. I'm just going to try a little bit of water here. It's a little bit more friendly. It slides off the trowel though. Let's give it a shot. push it on to get it to stick. It's a lot harder to work with than that other product. I can't even scoop it the way I want. Yes. It's hard. It's for a DIYer, this material is too difficult to work with on a vertical wall, at least for me. The other material is like a no-brainer. We're getting something on the wall here, but it's not exactly the most friendliest job.
All right, here's a close-up of that wall. It's not looking bad with this, uh, you know, the process that I did so far. But let me give you the real skinny now, now that I've had a chance to work with this product. Okay, so we have two products. You know that I started out with this one here called Stucco Patch. $15 for 25 pounds. Then, because this one's so much more inexpensive, and it gives you 45 minutes of working time as opposed to only 20 minutes of working time and this one here is $15 for 50 pounds I thought why not go for that one right now you saw me mix up both and apply both DIY friendly this one is the one that is DIY friendly hands down uh, the only advantage this has is that it's half price and it gives you more working time but there's a couple of the drawbacks this one here I have to do what's called wet curing so what I'm going to do right now is while this project is still wet and setting up I'm just going to take my garden hose like this here and I'm just going to keep it moist they want you to keep it moist for, let's just say, maybe uh, 45 minutes or 90 minutes, something like that. I think it's 90 minutes. And that's called wet curing. So that way when it, 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 it slows down the curing time and it makes the bond or the cement mixture, the stucco mixture, harder. So that is wet curing. Now, and that is what this product here wants you to do. So DIY friendly, this one here. Now, because I still have a boatload of this, I still I, I bought one bag just to give it a shot and give it a go. Um, I have a couple of choices here. I could either take that bag, throw it away, and just use this for the rest, the remainder of the project. But I'm thinking, why don't I do this? Why don't I do one scoop of that to two scoops of this? Uh, and that way I can burn that out, use that up, have a little bit more working time, and just kind of um, stretch it out. So that I'm going to give that a go on the next batch. But for right now, I actually need to stop because I have other things to do. So I'm going to start cleaning up. I'm not going to make another batch right now. I'm going to try to wet cure this as long as I can. And then um, we'll come back to this project at a later time. I just gave it another... Uh, wet uh, curing technique here and I am very disappointed because it's what it's doing maybe I'm putting too much water on because it's what I'm doing is I'm actually washing away the aggregate I mean I'm washing away the stucco material it's just washing uh, down here I think I guess I'm I'm, wa I'm wetting it down too much I gotta let it cure out uh, holy cow alright so anyways you, if you're gonna do this wet curing technique uh, let it set up pretty reasonably hard. I guess I'm not doing it hard enough. First time I've ever started working with this particular product, but and I can see that I've, I'm letting in too many. Um, I'm washing away too much stucco material. There's too many granules. I can tell just by looking at it. I don't know if the camera is picking it up. I'm trying to get it in as tight as you can see, but I don't know. It looks a little sketchy to me. Um, all right. That's it. All right, it's been a few hours, and this is all pretty much cured out. It actually doesn't look bad at all. Um, the is a, it's a little bit strong on the aggregate uh, coming through, but it's it's fine. It's actually it's not bad. I can live with that. Uh, I'm going to continue on now, and I'm going to make up another batch. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up. Here's my quart container right there. I'm going to do, normally what I do is three of those to one of water with this product. But what I'm going to do so I can burn a little bit of this product in, into the project and get rid of this bag is I'm going to take one half of one quart and use that material. All the rest of the material will be stucco patch. That way I'll have just a small amount of this into the project. So I'm going to mix up that batch right now, and then I'll show you what it looks like uh, uh, before I start 
applying it onto the uh, to the job site. But I got everything right here. I got my mixer and my stuff, and I'm gonna mix up a batch right now, and I'll be back to you in a minute. I was just getting ready to mix it up, and you start with the water, and I've got a bucket of water over here. The problem is, is that that bucket right there has warm water in it, and because it's already a hot day. Um, and I want my project to be cold, I got to uh, get some cold water in there. So I'll, I'll, I'll rinse out the hose until cold water starts coming out. So that's just a tip. On a hot day, you want to use cold water to give you longer working time. Okay, I mixed up about three and a half quarts. So about three and a half quarts of the powder to one quart of water. And this is how thick it came out. It's real thick. I think it'll be fine. We're going to go ahead and put this on the wall right now. Let's go to town. Well, that last batch cured on me so fast, I couldn't get it out of the bucket fast enough. So, pretty much this bucket is just, it's just, it's, I got, the bottom of this bucket is just rock hard. So I'm just calling this bucket trash. Um, and I gotta get another, I'm gonna use another bucket. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up half batches because, um, I didn't have enough working time to get it on the wall. So, um... I'm, uh, I didn't think it was that hot out here, but I guess it's so hot that I, I can't get the material on the wall. So I'm just going to do a half batch now. Alright, this is just a small half batch. Let's just go for that. Not too much. I should be able to work with this. Okay, the sun is uh, going over the house now. It's on the other side, so you can see that the that my shading areas, this wall will be covered in shade, shade in 30 minutes, just like it is right here, which is going to help me because things were drying out too quickly. But I'm going to continue on with my half patches. But I think you get the gist of exactly what's happening here. You can see how I've got the stucco material I'm trying to on oh, by the way on the top here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a little bit of a crown so that there's no ponding of water in the center so I want to try to crown this uh, top section here so it's the water sheds on both sides and I'm not covering up my drain holes here and I'm just making up the uh, the stucco material putting it on the wall and then using this rubber sponge float in order to uh, create and bring out that aggregate and give me that finish that kind of just just a regular stucco finish not, not a uh, a very complex texture as an example turning around here looking at the house you can see that this has got a different texture technique to it here um, I haven't done this texture, so I I don't have any. I I would have to practice this out to try to replicate this texture. This texture that I'm doing over here is DIY friendly. It's just a just an aggregate 1620 sand stucco finish with no no real no specific type of texture to it, such as this. So um, basically, you've got you've got the process down. I'm just going to uh, continue on with my project here. And try to try to get some headway going on this uh, on this wall. So sometimes I start out a little slow once I get the hang of things, and then things kind of pick up speed, and then you pick up momentum, and things go a little bit quicker.
this is how much I've gotten done but I want to go over this section over here one more time because the texture on this is a little bit different and I don't want it to show up on the paint so I'm just gonna touch that and skim coat that right now real quick Okay, here you go. I think that blends, that texture is going to blend in real nicely. Look at the top there. And that's going to blend in real nice with this product over here. So pretty much I've got the wall completed from there to right about, oh, here I guess. So I can just start from here down. I just, that section I had washed away the texture a little bit. I just wanted it to, to blend in better. So all this now matches. I'm reflecting back in the wall and on, on doing quality control and I can see that because of that cardboard I had missed like the first six inches. I'm just going to go over that right now and just try to get that so it blends in real nice so the wall will look like really really clean. So I'm going to start over at this end and work my way down just on that bottom half. Try to give you as much as you can see. All right, see how that really cleaned that up? That looks a lot better. I did, as the stuff started getting too hard, the stucco started getting too hard, so I had to move on to the to the top section over here where it's easier to apply the material. Uh, I can do it faster. So I'm just, but I'm gonna make gonna make another batch, and I'm just gonna start over here and where I left off, and and then continue on. So, but basically, you get the premise of what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to clean that up. All right, I think you have enough content on how exactly I'm doing this wall. You can see what the final paint ready uh, finish is going to look like starting at that end and coming down the wall. Obviously I'm not done, I got a lot more to go, but there's no reason for me to keep filming this raw section because you you got the the process down on how I did it. I gave you plenty of content here to show you how to do that. So uh, I'm going to uh, cut recording at this time and just uh, continue on on my own. Okay, so this is what the project looks like right now. And it should pretty much be paint ready up until that point right there. And I was just sweeping up and I was cleaning up my uh, all my debris that was on the floor here. And I can see how I've got just so much residue on this um, brick here that I'm getting a little bit concerned that I'm going crazy with uh, the way that I'm doing the, the project. Uh, you can see right where the transition is, let me just pan back, right where the transition is, all that, uh, all that brick over there, how clean it is. So what I'm going to do is, I don't want to continue, continue on with the same strategy here. First of all, I want to make sure I can clean this brick, so I'm going to try pressure washing it to see if I can get it out and plus I also want to remove at least the first layer of uh, brick 
that, that is touching the stucco. So this way I've got a gap set, separation there. So I'm going to put forth some energy to go in that direction right now. Well, as you can see, the pressure washer does a pretty good job. I didn't have to spend too much energy cleaning it off. So I guess I'll just stay with the same process that I've been doing, letting it bleed onto the brick and then just wiping um, and then just going over it with the pressure washer to, to to get rid of that residual. So on this section over here, where I still have to do all this work, um, I won't need to remove this row of uh, brick close to the uh, to the wall. I'll just simply do the exact same process. Uh, that I that I did over here for this section over here. So so anyways, just thought I'd give you an update on where I'm at and this uh, pressure washer is turning out to be pretty good. By the way, here's the spec on the uh, pressure washer. It uh, uh, there's a model number GC2403. Can't quite uh, zero HHB I guess. Um, anyways, it's a totally kick-ass pressure washer, gas pressure washer. I'm not sure what the pressure is, I don't have a gauge, but um, it's pretty good. Oh, and the tip that I'm using for the job is the uh, the yellow tip. I don't even know what the number uh, is, if that's 20 degree or exactly what it is, but that combination seems to work out well with this uh, this setup. Okay, just giving you an update on the project. All of this wall, starting at the very back there, has all been stuccoed. This is all pretty much paint ready. We are all the way down to here. And I stopped right over here at this, uh, where it does a different wall elevation. So I just kind of stopped right there. Now I've already gone through and just did some initial scraping on the wall here. So you can see where I just kind of scraped off. I got my pressure washer out here and I just started pressure washing starting from this side over here and you can see uh, what a fantastic job the pressure washer does and it's just completely taking the paint off and everything which is just giving me a really good etch on this and grabbing getting all the loose material plus I got some scrapers I've got my five-in-one tool here and I also got a crowbar and if I needed it I got a masonry hammer right there but basically I don't haven't even used that uh, but uh, basically I've just been using the five-in-one tool but just getting this wall ready and then this entire wall will look exactly like this when I'm done so everything will be just st stuccoed and paint ready so just kind of show you the project a little bit while I'm into it that's all all right here we are after pressure washing the wall can't really see over there that well because of the bushes but uh, we got the whole thing uh, just a little bit of cleanup now and then I think I'll uh, still go through and acid etch uh, muriatic acid etch the uh, and scrub the entire wall give it a nice cleaning so basically, since I started the project, and because I'm not a professional stucco expert person, and I'm just a DIYer here, so uh, uh, as I find with many projects, when you start something for the first time, you start off, you go through all those learning curves. By the time you finish the project, you're feeling pretty comfortable about um, the application of the project. That's a training that I'm going to give you right now, after I've done all the way and I'm at the tail end of my project. Now, the wall has already been prepped. Uh, check out my channel. Uh, I'll try to leave a link in the bottom here so that you can see uh, the prep of the wall, which is basically scraping off all the loose stucco material. I had a 2400 PSI pressure washer, blasted everything off. As a matter of fact, if you're looking at the wall, you can see how clean that wall is. Check this out. That wall is etched clean. All the old paint has been removed. I mean, I'm down to, to, to bare bones here, so it's uh, coming out uh, that the wall is prepped really, really good. By the way, so here's the finished product. This is what I'm, this is the finish that I am uh, achieving with this technique. It's called the 1620 uh, finish, stucco finish, which is basically just a, uh, a sand aggregate uh, type of a finish, and I'm trying to go for a smooth finish. I'm going to show you every single step 
right now and we'll mix up a few batches. I just do small batches uh, to, to do my, my, um, my uh, stucco. This is my mixing station right here. Half inch grill with my uh, half inch drill with my egg beater mixer right there in the end. Five gallon bucket. And then I've got some uh, quart containers. One there for the water and I have another quart container uh, somewhere over there. Uh, let's see, where is it? Right there. And that's for the dry uh, mix. The dry mix, this is the secret sauce right here. Rapid set stucco patch. Patch and paint ready in two hours. That is our go-to product. I've I've, I'm, I must be on my, my 25th box of this product uh, because I, um, that's how much uh, it takes. Okay, but anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mix up a batch. Uh, we're going to get it over there on the wall, and then we're going to go, uh, go right to it, and we'll show you every single step. First thing I want to do is I want to look at my wall to determine where my next um, material is going to go. Is it going to go on the wall, or is it going to go on top? I, what I like to do personally is I like to do the top down. So you can, if you can see the top, you can see the top has uh, not been touched yet. Okay, so we still have to do that whole top section right there. So, um, so that's going to be my intention to start with the uh, top down. Now, uh, stucco is extremely porous and it's like a sponge. So before I mix up my batch, what I'm going to do is just take my garden hose, which I've got right over here. And I'm just going to um, put a little bit of water on the top here just so that it's got a little bit of pre-soak into it. In this way it won't completely uh, absorb every single amount of moisture on my rapid set stucco patch. So let's do that right now. You'll also see that I like to keep some cardboard directly underneath my prod project. That way if I spill any, the cardboard is relatively clean. I can pick up that part and put it back on the wall rather than losing the product. If it spills onto the dirt, it's trash. So um, that's why I keep cardboard underneath my project area. Okay, now we're going to mix up a batch. So I'm going to take some water, and the water should be cool because it's hot outside. And I just use a half of a, con of a container of, uh, of water, of one quart of water. And that, so I have my ratio down pretty good. So there's a half of a quart of water here. I can always add to that. Put that in my, my mixing bucket. Then what I'm going to do, let me show you, is I've got my rapid set stucco. i got one quart container here for the dry. And I'm going to go ahead and take one container, one quart of that, put that in there. Then we're going to mix that up. It's going to be pretty soupy, but we're going to mix that up right now. All right, hopefully you can see how soupy that is. It's pretty soupy. And now I'm going to put in one more quart of the uh, powder, of the stucco pack. There we go. Now let's see, and mix that up and see what we get and see how thick it is. We can always add more powder or more water as needed. Okay, that's good. I can tell just from the consistency that's going to be good. Now I have to immediately rinse out my egg beater mixer. You got to keep your tools clean because they'll, they'll get hard because of that rapid set stucco patch. Now let's get to our wall. Okay, I want to start here and work my way down. Get some material on the wall. Now, personally, I like to have some gloves on, uh, so I have some uh, thick, very thick uh, gloves, and I like to work with gloves on. Put those on. Okay. Now we got the sun against us, so we have to move 
fairly quickly because it's setting up. I'm trying to achieve a crowned top so the water doesn't pond in the middle. You don't want a divot. If anything, you want a high, a high point in the, in the middle. Sometimes you don't have to do it all in one application. You can do it in two coats. But we'll get as far as we can with this. We'll see how far it takes us. I want to stop right about where the uh, cardboard ends. Right about here. All right. Now, what I'm going to try to do is try to get that crown, crown top going on. not looking bad and this batch is almost empty we're just going to burn this batch out Try to scrape out as much as I can here. Now we got to rinse out this bucket before it gets hard. We'll just let that sit with water. It's not going to harm anything. Now what we need to do is we need to get the rubber sponge on our project here to work this in and bring and bring out that sand aggregate finish. So you just uh, wet the sponge and you work it in like this, like a circular pattern, and basically try to get that crowned top that you're going for and work your speckle patch into the wall. So we're going to work this for a minute to get it to what the finish that we're looking for. And then I'll give you a close up of what it looks like. But basically that's it. As your sponge dries out a little bit, you dip it in water and you get more more water and you take off the old um, stucco patch that's drying out.
And if you don't achieve the proper finish on your first go around, let it set up and you can come back and put some more material on. It's not the end of the world. Although this is actually looking pretty good. Oh, and when you do your sponging, you want to move the sponge like this so that's the way it's not digging into your project. You want to always be um, moving how the uh, head of the sponge is uh, hitting the project. Alright, we're pretty good. Just like that. And then... I'll just sit back for a second here and look at that and make sure it's I'm happy with what I'm looking at in case I need to in case I missed something. It's a little bit of a high spot right there, but that's not bad. Alright, I can let that go. I don't want to overwork it, I just want to stop as soon as I'm happy. And I'm pretty happy like that. Alright. Then I take my sponge and I make sure that that is clean. And then I just leave it in the water. Now, let me give you a close up of the wall to show you what, uh, what that looks like. Oh, one section here that I don't like. Pretty much that's it. We're good. Alright, here is the close up of the top of the wall. And I'm liking it. And I'm thinking it's pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is get ready for the next batch, which I want to be in front of the cardboard and on the wall now. So I'm going to take my sponge, and not my sponge, my uh, hose, rinse that down and just get it a little saturated. And make sure my cardboard is ready. Got a little bit of dried stucco patch here. I want to move off of the uh, cardboard. So this way, if I spill any, I can just pick it right up and put it on the project. Okay. That's looking good. All right, let's go mix up a batch of stucco patch. Okay, we've got our batch, we've got our sponge, and now we want to get the material on the wall. We got our cardboard here. I like to keep one knee on the cardboard to keep it in place. Then uh, get get my stucco patch material on the trowel, and you can do this a few different ways. You can just grab the handle like this, uh, or sometimes I'll just take both hands and, and put my fingers like this to push push that material right into the wall really, really hard. So I, sit, I get it on the wall, and then I can maneuver it around. And I try to get it on the wall as, as fast as possible. And if a little bit spills, it's okay because I can pick it up. And I try to work from the left over. Now there's a drain hole here. I don't want to cover that up. 
because it's a retaining wall. So I'm going to go right to it, come up to here, and go around it. I can take my finger, it's good part of having gloves on here, and just make sure it doesn't go in the hole while I put it in there. All right, that's not bad. And I can work that with the sponge. is coming down on me making my working time less so I got to move forward here this is the time if you get a phone call you let it go right to voicemail don't be disturbed and walk away because this rapid set sets up so fast it'll be an ugly mess by the time you get back to it My bucket is empty. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to rinse out my bucket and then come back here and sponge float this in. So let me rinse out the bucket. Okay, here we go. Let's get that material on the wall. The um, Let's get the sponge, the rubber sponge here, and get this worked in before it sets up on us. We only have so much time. Now, when I get down to the bottom here, what I do is just work it like this against the cardboard. And just try to work out all those little divots and ridges and all that and try to get a nice smooth wall here. Okay, that's not bad. Stand back. Do you see the project? And that's not bad. This section looks pretty good. Make sure the stucco doesn't stick to the cardboard. I move it around a little bit. And that's fine. And now we can get ready for this next section right here. This whole thing can move, be moved down. Kind of like that. Okay. But the project is pretty much just like that. You just kind of work in your section and move down. Here you go. This project, or the stucco portion of the project, is in the rearview mirror for me. And I am happy with my DIY results. 
I think a, a professional could have done better, but I'm pretty damn close. I'm, I'm happy, I think, once I put the paint on the wall, that this is going to look just fine. And the only person that's going to notice imperfections is me, and that's just because I'm the guy that did the job. But it's just a wall. It's not, uh, I don't know, it's, you know, it's just simply a retaining wall. But uh, these, are, these are the results that you can get with this technique that I did. You know, I, I'm, I'm very happy with um, the way that this, this comes out. And it's DIY friendly. Just show you over here. It's, uh, it's pretty much DIY friendly with that uh, rubber sponge um, float and then rubbing it and bringing it the aggregate a little bit. And uh, you can produce really good results. So I just wanted to show you what the final outcome came. Okay, that's going to conclude this video on how to do, uh, redo a stucco wall. Um, check out the complete series so you can see how I did the, um, the prep on this project and uh, prepped out the wall, which basically was scraping, pressure, watch, pressure washing, uh, and then I did an acid etch with muriatic acid and then hosed everything off, got it nice and clean, let that dry out, and now you're seeing the, the next step, which is applying the rapid set stucco patch material. Then we'll let this set up. I'm basically going to continue that same process that you just saw me finish off this wall, let this whole thing cure out. Then um, what I'll do is I'll take my trowel, I'll hit any high spots off that are uh, on the wall, that are on the uh, secco that uh, uh, were overlooked or missed during this, pro th during this uh, stuccoing step. Then what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and paint with an elastomeric paint. And um, check out my channel, subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button right now. And that's it. I'll catch you on the flip side.